Good afternoon, everybody. I've seen some questions in the comments down below. Do the cows always come into the parlor in the same order? Uh, are the first ones always the same cows and the last ones into the parlor always the same cows? And usually the first cows are the same group of cows. So 605, 88, 1050, 1054, 1097. These are a couple cows that are gonna try to get in on this side first and um, they do like their sides as well. Not only being the first into the parlor, but they also like to stick to whatever side they go into. And you can really tell, you'll be trying to get a cow up into the parlor that is used to going in this side. If you try to push her in this side, she's just not gonna go. So uh, we're gonna see if I'm right, if I kind of guess which cows are gonna be coming in first. I know 605 is usually pretty consistent on this side first up in line. So we'll see if I'm right. I got the camera set right there. They all noticed it and they all stopped walking. Wow. Okay, that's 605 right there. Okay, I think I said 88, 605, 1097, um, and 1050. So these ladies are always just trying to be the first ones up into the parlor. Maybe they start to get the hang of it. The earlier you're in the parlor, the quicker you do get back to the barn and you can go lay down again, eat some food, you know, live the cow life in the cow barn. And uh, the first ones through the parlor gets to get back there first. There is definitely some motivation to get through the parlor as quickly as possible. The cows are probably just looking at me right now. Hurry up with milking, get me milked so that we can get back into the cow barn. So uh, that's what we're gonna get started with right now. Gonna head over here and turn the milker on first milk and start the ADF claws. We are about halfway done the first group right now. And the same cows are always last to come up into the parlor of each group as well. So 10, 27, uh, 25, 37, and 9, 10 are three cows that are usually all the way at the back of group one. And uh, they always seem to be the last cows into the parlor. Same for group two, same cows are always first and the same cows are always last. And uh, it's pretty funny to see. I wanted to get some coffee, but there was no cream in the fridge, so. We're gonna fill it up in here. Save this cow here. So there's 2537. These are the last 12 cows that are gonna go up into the parlor. 910 is right there. And 1027 is right there. She's a big tall one. So these cows are even more consistent than the ones that are always first. Those three, you always notice them in the last line. Hey Jan, look at this one. It's better. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> good girl, good girl. Nice. move a bin here this line of bins there's five big 7500 bushel bins and then there's this one smaller one I think it's 2200 bushels and it's kind of pretty far back now lining the auger up we have to line our big red auger up from this way hitting it like that and unfortunately that means that the hopper of that auger swings out this way so for unloading a B train the shop is in the way and we can't unload that B train right here 
So if we do unload a B train into this bin, we have to back the auger up, line it up, unhook the tractor, drive it forward, swing that hopper around, rehook the tractor up again, and then the B train can just come from here, the hopper will be on this side, and then we, to take the auger away again, have to unhook the tractor again, swing the hopper around, hook the tractor back up, crank the hopper up, and then we can go again. But uh, it's just a major inconvenience the way this bin is set right here. We figured if we pull it forward equal length or equal with the other five bins there, we'll be able to line that auger up from that way and then we can just line it up and then the B train can drive right beside it. That way we can stop having to unhook the tractor every time we want to fill this bin up from a B train. We typically store feed in this bin, so we always buy it in a B train pretty much. A B train is one of those trucks that has the two trailers of grain behind it. They're pretty decently sized, they're not that maneuverable or agile and uh, that's why it's such a difficult spot. So we're just gonna try and move that bin forward this afternoon. And uh, yeah, see how that goes. I am first going to uh, take the bucket off of the loader here and put those grapple forks on. So pretty much just trying to move it, I don't know, two meters forward. There's some bin anchors in the ground here. This one's halfway screwed up. And then there's another one over here and we're pretty much gonna have to take those two out before we can move it forward. There's, I think, two or three in the back, but we don't need to take those out to move it. So I think we're, my dad was saying, gonna try and hand crank those out to start them and then use our cordless drill and uh, suck them all the way out. Unreal. Well, I guess the drill only got him out that far, so we're gonna have to hand crank him out the rest of the way. So this is where we got the bin moved to. You can see it's like a meter and a half forward and a little bit to the right there. Dad's just grabbing the auger. He wants to line it up to make sure it's in the right spot. Bin's not perfectly level, so we're gonna lift it up on this side and shovel a bit of gravel underneath it. Make sure it sits level. So it's tilting a little bit this way, but if we move it back and forth a little bit with the wheel loader, hopefully it'll sit level. So we got it moved over. It's pretty level right now, sitting on quite a bit of gravel. And underneath most of the um, footing there is gravel, so that's good. We just gotta move these anchors over. I think there's just two more anchors that we gotta suck out. And we can put the four back around it. Those anchors just keep it um, from tipping over if it would get real windy when the bin was empty. You can see here this anchor is deep in the ground and there's a cable around the bottom of the bin. Well, check it out guys. 
It's a little bit white out here today. Oh, we got some snow yesterday. A little bit of it started melting away, but a lot of it stuck around. Perfect timing on this dirt work here, flattening this gravel out. Hopefully we're not stuck with the snow until next spring already. It's still pretty early to have snow for the winter, but um, you never know out here. So we're gonna have to put some bedding in the corrals. We just wanna make sure that the youngest calves out there are gonna have a nice warm, dry spot to lay uh, because of this snow just came. So I think we're gonna be putting bedding in three corrals, the youngest calves, and um, also the close-up calving pen out there that also needs some fresh straw just in case the cow calves out there and we don't see it right away we want to make sure that calf can just snuggle up in some nice dry straw and stay warm So now any calves born in this corral, our close-up corral, they're gonna be in some nice, clean, dry straw. Well, we got those corrals bedded up and the calves are laying in some nice, dry bedding. But uh, that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram, at SaskDutchKid, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.